Welcome to lesson 4.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at the billboard feature of Alice, which I think is a pretty cool feature and oftentimes a little underutilized by most Alice programs. Uh, it goes al along with our texture mapping lesson. In our texture mapping lesson, we learned how to take these flat images and apply them to a 3D object. Billboards are really simply just a 2D object or a picture added to your world. And you can do some really cool things with them if you're a little bit creative. So I'm going to show you a couple of the ideas that you know, I've implemented for using billboards. Uh, we're going to have a challenge program for Lesson 4.2, and we're kind of going to be recreating our museum scene using uh, billboards rather than, well, billboards mixed with 3D objects. But they're really kind of cool and can add some functionality to your programs and add some graphics to your programs that you might not be able to get with Alice. So let's take a look at how we use billboards in an Alice program. So one of the first things that I like billboards for is to create a better background. This works really well for uh, space animations and sea animations or anything where images could realistically float. You can do this for uh, all animations. It just seems to work better, and I'll show you why. Um, in Lesson 3.2, we created an undersea world, and we did so by adjusting fog levels and light properties and things like that. We're going to do the sea scene again, but this time we're going to use a different method. We're going to need a good ocean background. So let's open up our web browser, and I'm going to do a search for undersea background and use Google Images to see what comes up. And I got lots of cool different images that I can use. Now the one that I found that I, I liked for this was this guy right here. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to save this image to my Alice directory. And you can see that I've already done this when I ran through the test program. So go ahead and save this image right here, and I named mine underbot underwater background number one, you can name it whatever you'd like. So now I have an image file that I can use. Heading back over to Alice, very simple to get this added to our world. I'm going to go to File and select Make a Billboard off of the menu. Just like I did with my texture maps, I'm going to go to my Alice directory or wherever I saved this uh, particular image file and I'm going to select it and import it into my world. You can see it creates a relatively 3D object. In fact, if I click Add Objects here, I can manipulate this just like I do any other object. I can raise it off the ground, I can rotate it, I can move it. And what I want to do is I want to position this billboard such that it fills the entire screen. And to do that, I'm going to resize it, I'm going to make it face the camera, and I'm going to pull it forward so that the bottom of the billboard just cuts off the camera. Now, instead of having uh, an Alice background, which is true 3D, don't get me wrong, there's an advantage to that, I have a 2D background, but I'm going to use this to build the rest of my scene. I want to add some fish to my scene. So from the gallery, I'm going to go back to Ocean, just like it did for the Undersea World we created in 3.2. And I want to add a couple fish to this image. And let's see which one we like. I like this ugly fish right here. Let's go ahead and add an ugly fish to this world. Now this is a one side effect of using billboards. I've added the ugly fish, but right now I can't see it. My camera is zoomed in so close to this background that the image was added behind it and there's no way for me to grab it. Now, I could certainly adjust my camera and try and find it and pull that object, but there's an easier way to do this. In one of the earlier lessons, I showed you the is showing property. We're going to take this underwater background, click on the properties tab, and change is showing to false. That makes my object disappear, and now I can clearly see my fish behind it. With my fish visible, I can now drag him, 
I, I usually try and get him about the center of the scene for now. So I've got him dragged forward. Make sure underwater background number one is selected and change it back to true. And the fish disappeared, which means I didn't pull him forward far enough, so I'm going to change it to false and continue dragging the fish forward. Let's go back to true. And there, I've got my fish in front of the billboard. Really all we're doing is dragging the fish forward so that it's in front of this flat screen that we've added. If I were to take the fish now that I can grab him and push him back, I can see that it's possible for me to make him disappear behind my background. So I want him just in front of the background, and I'll position him just like I do every other 3D object. Make him face the left, and he might be a little bit too big, so I'll resize him to be appropriate for the scene. Let's raise him up so that he's more in the water. Maybe turn him to the right. And now I've got an Alice 3D object in front of this 2D billboard. Now, the ugly fish probably wants some friends. So using the duplicate tool, I'm going to create another ugly fish. And he'll be swimming at a little bit of a lower elevation. And I want him to be a different color than the first one to give it a little bit more variety, something I forgot to do in the original undersea scene. I'm selecting un ugly fish number two here. And under properties, we're going to make him a red ugly fish. And let's copy another one. And this guy's going to be a little bit smaller than the other, so we'll resize him to be a little bit smaller and rotate him so that he's not the same way. And we'll do the same for this. And we'll make him more of a yellow tinted fish. I guess that comes off looking a little bit green. But now I've made a, a small school of fish. Placed on the background, we've got a high-res background that might make our scene look a little bit more realistic in our animations. And I might want to add a shark to the scene, so I'm going to click on Add a Shark to the World. The same thing happens. The shark ends up in the background. So I'm just going to select the underwater background number one, change its it sh is showing property to false, grab my shark, and start pulling him forward through the world. So let's uh, get him forward here and rotate him a little bit. So we've got the shark forward in the scene, and then we turn is showing back to true and make sure your underwater background is selected. We now have the shark in the scene, and we'll position him accordingly, and we want the shark to be facing maybe a different direction and facing the camera, and we'll have him resized a little bit so that his back end isn't going through our billboard. So we've got positioned here, and now we can start adding all of these objects to this 3D billboard, and even in the future, animate in front of this. So that's one use of the billboard that's pretty cool. For this next example, I'm going to want a space world. So if you don't remember how to do that, it's File, New, Space, and hit Open. I want to add just some 3D objects to this world. Definitely you would spend some time creating a more realistic world, but let's get some objects added to the screen. So I've already opened the planets gallery and I'm going to throw Earth up here in the background and resize it. And then I want a moon and you can copy this with what you know about uh, texture mapping to create a more realistic scene if you want. And now that I think that looks pretty good. So there's a couple things that I want to do in this scene. The first thing I want to do is add stars in the background. So let's head over to Google, or our web browser, and I'm going to do a search for stars background. And I just want to find a neat background for our scene. And this guy, well, let's see. Ah, this one looks like we'll do. This one's got enough stars to make the background interesting. So I'm going to save this image to my Alice directory, and we'll call this stars background. Go back to Alice, and let's import that as a billboard. I'm going to do this by selecting File and Make Billboard. I'll go find the image that I downloaded, Stars Background, and get this added to the world. It adds my 2D image. I'm going to resize this and push this in further into the background so that it's behind the 3D objects that I've already added. I'll raise the elevation of that, and let's 
make it bigger. And so now I've used a billboard to quickly create a star's background for my space world, which is a little bit better than the typical black background you get from a space world. But that's not the cool thing I want to do with billboards. One of the other things that Alice does that's pretty cool is it holds on to the transparency of an image. If you're unfamiliar with graphics, uh, there's different file types. You've probably seen them, see some of them, like .jpg or .gif or .png. Well, even if you don't know a lot about graphics, one thing that you should probably pick up on is PNG image specific, specifically, sorry about that, specifically will have or have the ability to have a transparency layer. If I go to Google and I do a search and I want a spaceship cockpit, so I'm going to type in spaceship cockpit and I'm going to let Google know that I want a PNG by typing in specifically PNG and I'm going to get this image. Now this is something that won't work with JPEG images. You get these images right here and not all of them are going to be transparent. If I click on say this one right here I can see that this looks like a normal image. But this top left one when I open it I get this checkerboard pattern in the background. The checkerboard pattern in a PNG lets you know that that part of the picture is transparent. What makes this kind of cool analysis is let's save this image and we're going to call this cockpit and it's a PNG image and remember this is only going to work with PNGs and hit save. When I go back over to Alice and import our cockpit as a billboard everything that had that checkerboard look will be see-through, it will be transparent, so, or the cockping. Let's go ahead and import our uh, cockping image. And so I've got that sitting here now, but you'll notice there's transparency where the glass for the cockpit is. If I enlarge this right here, I can create a virtual cockpit for my image. Let's drag this forward a little bit. And that might be a little bit too large for me right here, so let's maybe lower the elevation just a bit. And that looks about right. And so now, using a PNG image, I've created almost an overlay on my program right here that makes it look like I'm in this, the cockpit of a spaceship. And this is possible by using billboards. And it's a really neat effect that you can add to some of your games, animations, and scenes, particularly when you get a little bit more skilled with using the methods that'll come in future lessons. You can create really cool like space simulations, or if you're going to make a driving game, you could put a... Uh, like a convertible or a car uh, cockpit image there and make your games really stand out compared to the other Alice games that are out there. So now it's your turn to practice a little bit with uh, billboards. You've got transparent PNG images, you've got JPEG images, and you're limited only by what you can find on the internet. In fact, you could even use a uh, graphic editing program, some of the free ones that are on online that are kind of cool are paint.net or uh, GIMP depending on your level of skill and I'll, I'll put links to those down in the description but those are some free graphic editing programs that you can use if you wanted to create your own transparent images. Um, I've had students in the past that have wanted uh, a certain cockpit but it wasn't a transparent image so they went into those editing programs and edited the, the file so that the images they want had transparencies where they want, so there's, there's really some neat stuff you can do with that. But now it's your turn to practice. This week's challenge program, or the Lesson 4.2 challenge program, is going to be to redesign your, redesign your museum scene from Lesson 3.2, this time using billboards to try and make it a little bit more realistic. Let me show you what I've got. Alright, so while it's certainly not perfect, you can see we've used a, a mix of billboards and 3D objects to redo our museum scene to look a little bit more realistic. I'm not saying this is necessarily better, it's just a different style that you can use in Alice depending on what program you're trying to use. 
the objects from my original scene made their way back. I still have Jupiter, Mars, and Earth, and I still have them on my Roman columns, but I've downloaded the background for a museum. It's very grainy. Uh, I could have spent some time finding a higher resolution image, but for purposes of example, it will show you one of the things that you could possibly do. I just used a Google search for museum interior and searched around until I found one. And then I took a, a picture of Earth and a picture of the Mona Lisa, and those are billboards as well, and I just kind of positioned them in front of the graphics that were on the screen. So using a mixture of billboards and 3D objects, I've created the inside of a museum using Alice. And when, I mean, when I come out here, you can see I can take and drag this Mona Lisa right here. All I've done is turn the object a little bit so that it looks like it's along the background. But just like all the other objects, you can see it's, it's just one flat object against another. I've taken the 3D objects. And because these 3D objects, they're not really pushed back. I've used size to create the illusion of some being further in the background. But because this image is flat, I couldn't really push them backwards in the 3D world. I was very limited to using a 2D plane for this, but I did use resizing to give my picture a little bit of depth and you know, try and make it look a little bit realistic. Certainly, there are people out here who could do a much better job than me. I'm not the most artistic person in the world, but you get the idea. Your job is to create your museum scene again, but this time use billboards along with your 3D objects to create a more realistic scene. As always, if you have any questions about how to do this, if you want any ideas or something isn't working right for you, you can leave those down in the comments and I will help you out as soon as I can. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.